created using Powtoon.
Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show with Ralph Friedrichs. Today we're going to talk about tips on uh, or tips for relating to your family while you're sober, hopefully forever. As always, I want to give a shout out to uh, startingpointmn.com. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez at startingpointmn.com. What they have there is you can become an addiction recovery coach like I am and like Dr. Luis Gonzalez is. Do you have passion? Do you have professionalism? Do you have a personality? Do you have some sort of addiction background, whether it's your own battles or battling with someone else helping them? You can call him at 844-414-8444. Also, he can be your addiction recovery coach. He can walk with you from your addiction to your recovery, hand in hand, 24 hours at a time one day at a time never ever worrying about yesterday uh, he does not care about the past nor do i we are not counselors we're not therapists what we are is addiction recovery coaches and what we're here for is to help take your life back also want to give a shout out to globaleyeglasses.com where they are focused on saving you money globaleyeglasses.com have frames eyeglass frames ranging from six dollars up to about forty nine dollars those prices include standard prescription single vision clear non-coated lenses now if you want to add on to that you can add progressive lenses you can add line bifocals you can add transitions you can add polarization you can add transition anti-reflecting coating many many more and we have fr or they have frames that are so stylish even Elton John would be amazed by some of the frames what you need to do is go to www.globaleyeglasses.com where they are focused on saving you money. Go jo join them. Go see them. If you have any questions whatsoever, I'm very familiar with this company. Text me 631-599-0218 if you need help placing the order. I am an optician. I can help you take your glasses back from globaleyeglasses.com. Want to give a shout out also to my own website, my new website, which is Take Your Life Back Today Show at, uh, excuse me, dot com. That's Take Your Life Back Today Show dot com. You can email me at Ralph at Take Your Life Back Today Show dot com. That's R A L F at Take Your Life Back Today Show dot com. Let me know what you think about my show. Let me also know what you think. Maybe I need to talk about during some of my future segments. Let me know about your own struggles or maybe your family struggles, but. Get in touch with me at 631-599-0218. You can also call my hotline, 844-405-HELP, and I will help take you or take your life back for you. We're going to talk about tips for relating to your family sober. <coughs> it's not a very long segment today. Uh, there are many lessons for recovering alcoholics and addicts to learn. An ongoing lesson that you may have to learn and relearn is how to relate to your family without the influence of drug or alcohol in you. And that can be tough because in the older days when you were drinking and drugging, uh, it seemed to always just flow naturally because you had no control of what you were saying. You had no control of what you were doing. Not an excuse, but it's reality. In most cases, you don't get to choose your family. Whether you see them frequently or occasionally, dynamics that go on between families can cause extreme uh, uh, vi uh, extreme uncomfortable situations at gatherings. Uncontrolled emotional reactions can be dangerous, trigger, and can lead to cravings for substance that can change your mood or numb your pain. So don't let these family ga gatherings get you down where you might actually start drinking or drugging again. Families, including spouses, parents, children, and siblings, have a tendency to know how to push each other's buttons just the right way. You may have to interact, interact with them at family functions or you may even live with them. In some cases, aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, and in-laws may also cause you to feel um, reactive. How can you relate to members of your family without becoming emotional or picking up that drink or maybe that joint? Here are some tips, about six tips that I have put together. Um, relating to your relatives the people who make you want to drink more than anyone else and uh, again there are some people out there that might have the best scenarios when it comes to family get-togethers but this is the for all intents and purposes this segment is designed for the people that really truly 
run into situations at family gatherings that maybe are not as comfortable. Number one is create a chosen family among people in recovery. You may wish to, uh, you could choose your family, but you can't. You could choose your friends, however. You have an opportunity to surround yourself with new people who genuinely care about you. Many of them will give you a uh, give and take unconditional love and can be thought of you as your new family. So let's recap. Create a chosen family. In other words, you can take a lot of your friends that you get along so well, and hopefully they are friends that are in recovery themselves, and, and you can kind of redesign that friendship into a smaller uh, uh, family atmosphere. Uh, that way when you get together, uh, you're around them. I'm not saying to avoid your immediate family. What I am saying is to, to come with an alternative. Number two, practice looking for good in people who drive you crazy. No matter what the person does to you, there is good in every single person. No matter where you are, I mean, you could be, like I always say, you could be watching me from jail. It doesn't matter. You're still good. Whatever you have done, you are paying for it now. If being around your family members makes you see only bad things, make a conscious effort to look for something good in each one of them, and I know you can find something good in them. When you're feeling angry at a particular family member, think of the last one good thing to say about them. Just, just think of one thing. But if uh, you don't necessarily have to say it to them, but say it to yourself in your head, and psychologically you'll build up a resistance towards the hostility that might be surrounding them. But if you get into habit of writing down good things about your family members, you will begin to realize that in most cases, they are all not that bad. Just jot down. Each person has good. Even drug dealers have good. Even, believe it or not, murderers have good. In the eyes of God, we are all children of God. Number three, an important one. Pray for them. <clears throat> Some recovering addicts find it healing to pray for people who have hurt them. By repeating words, wishing good things for other persons, and doing it several days a week at a time, you may find that after a while you come to mean it. I'm not saying just say something because you don't mean it, but if you consistently and constantly look for good in people and say good things about them, eventually they do become better people. Number four, avoid or limit interactions for now if you need to. Family dynamics can be very destructive for someone in recovery, especially in the beginning of recovery. If you know that every time family functions, every single member of your family is going to end up drunk or using drugs, being in the environment may not be a safe or healthy situation for you. Um, bring a sober friend with you uh, at the function that you can actually communicate and get along with in case uh, your whole family decides to drink and drug and fall apart around you. Remember that you only have to decide today what you're going to do on this one day. Today being 24 hours like we just spoke about Dr. Lewis Gonzalez and myself. We only concentrate on 24 hours at a time. Um, remember that you only have to decide just for today. You don't have to make any decisions today that affects you for the rest of your life. Make the decisions today for today. Number five, consider family therapy if that's what you think uh, is justifiable. In many cases, in many cases, wounds can be healed if you want them to, and if you and your family members are willing to work at it. Family therapy can put a third party in between you and other members of the family who may be in the middle of a destructive dance. Allowing professionals to help may be, uh, may be all that is needed to grow toward a healthier relationship with members of your family. Healing won't happen overnight, but you can start to move in a positive direction. Remember to put, this is number six, I'm sorry. Remember to put first things first. Your sobriety has to hold the number one position in your life no matter how much I love my wife and children and grandchildren number one is sobriety because if I put my wife as number one and sobriety is number two my wife number one will either be gone or I'll be dead sobriety has to and I repeat has to be your number one uh, priority in life without sobriety the rest of your family uh, your life will most likely unravel again Sometimes there are family members who keep bringing up the past or keep trying to get you, uh, get an addict to resume old behaviors. If that's the case in your family, you need to step back for now. It's time to take care of you. 
the members of your family are people who have shared much of your life journey with you it's worth learning to relate to them sober it is not merely all these years that you just were drunk or on on drugs and you became sober and you just walk into their life thinking oh they, they won't remember anything because they do remember more than likely most of them were sober at the time so it is up to you to learn to interact with them sober it is up to you to make amends with anyone that you might have hurt. Now, when I say amends, you need to pick and choose your, your confessions because if you're going to confess to something that's going to make a situation even worse where you might even get so low or down in the dumps that you might have a trigger and relapse, it is not worth amend, uh, making amends with that person. Make amends with God for anything that you have done make amends with God that is the most important it is good and a good practice to go back to people you have heard but you need to be careful on who you say and what you say to them let's do a recap tips for relating to your family sober is the topic for today there are many lessons for covering alcoholics and addicts to learn an ongoing lesson that you may have to learn and relearn is how to relate to your family without the influence of drugs and alcohol in you in most cases, you don't get to choose your family. Whether you see them frequently or occasionally, dynamics that go between families can cause extreme, uh, sometimes dangerous, sometimes hostile environment. Uncontrolled emotional reactions can be, can be a dangerous trigger and can lead to cravings for substance abuse, again, or for alcohol abuse. Family, including spouses, parents, children, siblings, have a tendency to know how to push your buttons. You may have to interact with them at family functions or you may even live with them and that becomes even tougher when you live with them in some cases aunts uncles grandparents cousins and in-laws may also cause you to feel reactive how can you relate to members of your family without becoming emotional or picking up that drink or drug here are some tips six tips that i have thrown together uh, relating to your relatives the people who make you want to drink more than anyone else and, and this is not across the board, this is just in some cases. Number one is to create a chosen family among people in recovery. You may wish you could choose your family, but you can't. So you can create a, uh, a makeshift type of family. You can choose your friends, however. You have the opportunity to surround yourself with new people who genuinely care about you. Many of them will give and take unconditional love and can be thought by you as your family. Number two, <clears throat> practice looking for good in people who drive you crazy. If being around your family members makes you see only bad things, make conscious effort to look for something good in them. When you're feeling angry at a particularly family member, think of at least one good thing about them. You don't necessarily have to say it to them, but if you get in the habit of writing down good thoughts about your family members, you will begin to realize that in most cases, there are some good in all family members. I have, this is a, 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 step two is a very important one for me because I have learned to accept as much as I could from certain family members that really know how to push my buttons. And I have also learned not only to find good in them, but the best source of action not to have family issues with certain family members is to avoid them. Avoid being pulled into their vacuum of insults or a vacuum of criti criticizing or bringing up your past avoid them totally it's better like when we were brought up about fighting it's better to walk away than to be drawn into a battle that you probably will not win because your past will be brought up over and over and over and over again number three and this is an important one because I truly believe that your higher power God is your guidance and your direction so if you do run into a family problem where a family member is continuously or constantly trying to pull you into the past where you might even consider using again you need to pray for them some recovering addicts find it healing to pray for people who have hurt them by repeating words wishing good things for the other person and doing it for several days or weeks at a time you may find that after a while you come to mean it and I'm hoping that when you do pray to God every prayer is a meaningful prayer it is not just merely hoping 
for better. It is relying on your Lord Jesus Christ to make it better for you. He is the Father that guides and directs you. And if you're in recovery, I am hoping and praying that part of your recovery is God. Number four, avoid or limit interactions for now if you need to. Family dynamics can be very destructive for someone in recovery. If you know that every family function, every single member of your family is going to end up drunk and using drugs, that is a red flag, that is an alert, that is a situation you need to avoid. Being in that environment may not be a safe environment for you. And I'm not talking a physically safe, I'm talking about in a uh, recovery safe atmosphere. Bring a sober friend to your family functions. Someone that will actually not drink or drug and can relate to you throughout the whole evening. But if being around your family threatens your sobriety, you may need to avoid that type of an event for a while until you're strong enough. And, and you know, with, like a baby, a baby crawls, a baby wa uh, uh, walks and then runs. Sobriety is the same way. There are certain stages where you build up a certain tolerance in recovery and sobriety where you feel comfortable enough like to me that I can walk into a liquor shop and get my lottery. I can walk into Applebee's and have literally have someone sitting in front of me drinking wine because I have become strong enough in sobriety. I educate myself daily on how to live with it. Because it's you have one of two choices. You either live with your sobriety or you become a drug uh, abuser or a alcoholic again. Those are your two options. And it is very hard for you to do it on your own. And that's why I'm telling you folks, you need to rely on God to help you. Remember that you only have to decide today whether uh, you're going to go to a family member or, I mean, family function or whatever you're going to do. It's only for today that you need to worry about. Today's 24 hours. Don't worry about it tomorrow or next week. You don't have to make any decisions today that will affect you for the rest of your life. Number five, consider family therapy. In many cases, wounds can heal if you want them to. And if you want you and your family members uh, to work at it, you need to go see a therapist or a counselor. Family therapy can put a third party in between you and other members of the family who may be in the middle of a destructive dance. Mm -hmm. Allowing professionals to help may be all that's needed to grow a, towards a happier and healthier relationship. But I want to warn you folks something or about something. I do believe in therapy, but I feel that if you as the alcoholic or the drug abuser goes with a family that really never does drugs or alcohol, be careful because the family members, although you have a mediator there, might gang up on you. And I don't want you to fall into a situation that you become depressed or it triggers you into a relapse. Make a commitment with your family members prior to go to this therapist or counselor that we will work on today and tomorrow. The past is the past that cannot be changed. And the worst thing for your recovery is bringing up the past. And that's why Dr. Luis Gonzalez from StartingPointMN.com and myself, we're addiction recovery coaches. We don't talk about your past. We worry about you for today and tomorrow. Number six, Remember to put first things first. Your sobriety has to hold the number one spot on your list. Not your spouse, not your children. Because without sobriety, everything around you will fall apart again. Number one has to be sobriety. And that is shared with God in the same level. Without sobriety, the rest of your life will most likely unravel and fall apart like the good old days. Uh, I shouldn't even say good old days, like the old days. Sometimes there are family members who keep bringing up the past or keep trying to get an addict to resume old behaviors. In that case, if that's the case in your family, you may need to step back for now and avoid these situations. It is time to take care of yourself. It is time to take your life back. The members of your family are people who have shared much of your life's journey with you. It's worth learning to relate to them in a sober way, but do not get sucked into the vacuum of the past. It is very easy for family members or anyone 
to talk about what you have done, that you used to drink too much, you used to smoke or, or snore too much. That is not going to help you today. That will only make you depressed and suck you back into possibly doing all those things all over again. We need to worry about today and tomorrow. Folks, if you're watching me, no matter where you might be, and we talk about this quite often, you might be in jail, you might be in a homeless shelter, you might be in a nursing home, you might be at a library right now watching me on the internet. No matter where you are, you have to remember that it's never too late to stop doing drugs and alcohol. Like any other problem in the world, it is only too late after you're gone. It's not too late to start a new chapter in your book of life. Today, January 16, 2015, let today be the first new chapter in 2015 and a new chapter in your book of life. We all have chapters in our book of life. Every chapter is a year of your life. I am in my 53rd chapter. My first chapters between 0 and 18 were like any normal child's chapters. And then from 18 all the way to chapter 51 had a lot of alcohol involved. Didn't have a lot of problems other than uh, accidents and uh, 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 other personal issues that were and are fixed but other than that alcohol was my biggest enemy alcohol was the poison in my life and then at chapter 51 I decided to take my life back with the grace of God I sit here before you in front of this camera today January 16 2015 writing chapter 53 every single day and why not start writing a new chapter in your book of life today it is never too late unless you're not around anymore we all eventually will have an expiration date only God knows when at that time will come but each and every day that goes by and you continuously do your drugs and alcohol is each and every day wasted in the life that you cannot get back again remember as you sit in front of uh, watching me in front of the TV or the, the internet and you're breathing and you're blinking your eyes there is someone in the world somewhere maybe even in your community that is closing their eyes for the last time and breathing for the last time the question here is, is, did those people that are closing their eyes for the last time and breathing for the last time have a chance to change their life? Well, we'll probably never know that. But you, January 16, 2015, have a chance to change your life. If you truly want to stop your drinking and your drugging, stop denying that you have a problem and reach up to God and let God guide and direct you. And I use this terminology or this example. Your body is like a ship. It's a vessel. Your mind and your soul is like the captain of your vessel. No captain takes their vessel into the rough oceans without navigation. Because what's going to happen is you'll be all over the place, possibly even sink. So you as the captain of your body, which is the vessel, needs to find a navigator and what better navigator than the Lord Jesus Christ to navigate you through the rest of your life whenever each and every day you get a chance just pray to God for guidance and direction and I guarantee you as I sit here that you will see changes physically mentally spiritually and financially but all for do all things do come with time don't expect because you're broke today that by praying to God you'll have a bank account this afternoon. It's not going to be happen. Uh, it's not going to happen that way. What you need to do is to be dedicated to the Word of Christ, dedicated to the Bible, and dedicated being a good human. And as you pray and you pray, and He navigates your vessel, your body, and navigates you as the captain, you'll see that your ship, you, will coast in life or coast on the ocean 
like it was a clear glass sheet of ice. There won't be large waves anymore trying to throw your vessel over. There won't be storms anymore. And when there are storms and large waves, if you pray to God, He will get you through each and every storm that you might face in life. But please start today, January 16, 2015. And no matter who you are that's watching me, know that God loves you no matter what your situation is. If you're in jail, God loves you. If you're down in a dump and you have no money and you're in a homeless shelter, God loves you. If you're coming from a broken family, God loves you. It doesn't matter who or what your situation is, God loves you. But it is up to you to get those changes in effect. If you do have drugs and alcohol issues in life, reach to God, he will guide and direct you. Remember this, that a sober today will always give you a better tomorrow. That's, that's a given, that's a promise. And if you personally let the sunshine into your heart and your home, you will get nothing but positive results. Avoid the negative people around you. Don't battle with them. If they want to be negative and they want to bring up your past, just say thank you or just walk away. You're not going to win. You cannot run from your past. If God is willing to forgive you about your past, so should anyone else. But there are also those people that will, no matter what, maybe it's their self-esteem for themselves or the fact that they're just nasty people will always bring up your past. Avoid them. Start today, January 16, 2015, to make a new life for yourself. Let the last chapters in your book of life, no matter what they are, be the best chapters in your life, no matter what they are. So that when you're gone one day, people will remember you for the last chapters of your book. But if you continuously go down the road of drugging, drug abusing and alcoholism, not only will you kill yourself, but people will remember those issues. Your family needs you, no matter who you are. And I will tell you as I sit here that you don't need to have alcohol and drugs in your life. What you do need to have is family structure in your life. You need to be a good role model in, in life. And you need to include God in your life. A sober today makes for a better tomorrow. Do this when you go to bed. I know each and every one of us, when we go to bed, we take our shoes off or our sneakers or our slippers and we put them by the edge of the bed on the floor. Tonight, I want you to push them halfway under your bed. That way, when you get up tomorrow morning, you'll be forced to go on your knees to retrieve those shoes, sneakers, or slippers. And while you're on your knees, just thank the Lord Jesus that He is allowing you another day on this beautiful earth. Make each and every 24-hour day count to the best of your ability. Don't waste your days in the corner getting drunk or smoking or, or drugging. Do con something constructive. Come up with a good passion. My passion is this. Go help other people. Go to hospitals and, and, and volunteer there. Go to homeless shelters and volunteer. Go to your neighbor and volunteer to pick up the newspaper for them but come up with some sort of passion as an alternative to drug abuse or alcohol abuse. And you can take your life back. And if you have any questions about taking your life back and you need help, let me help take your life back. 844-405-HELP. Uh, That's 844-405-HELP. You can text me if you don't want to talk to me, 631-599-0218. Go to my website, www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com. Email me <coughs> at ralph, R-A-L-F, at Take Your uh, Life Back Today Show. And um, you can also um, get a hold of Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. And between Dr. Luis Gonzalez and myself, let us help take your life back. May God bless you, and please have a sober day. Take care.